In this learning unit, you will focus on a critical function of the policy analyst, namely making data speak for your decision maker. As you'll learn from the readings, particularly Kegel, data do not speak for themselves. Throughout the rest of the semester, data will play a key role in what you will do as an analyst. First, you will need to identify and present data to make the case that a problem is worthy of governmental attention. Later in the semester, data will provide key evidence for the impact of the various alternatives and the monetary cost of those alternatives. As Kettle notes, policymakers view problems as occurring where people live. This is where jurisdictions really matter. Of course, legislative districts often overlap municipalities or counties, but policies are not made to govern legislative districts. Rather, policies are made at the federal level, at the state level, in many states at the county level, and at the municipal and school district levels. I say in many states at the county level because in New England in particular, counties only serve as geographic boundaries for census purposes, but there is no county governance in most New England and several northeastern states. As you know, for your problem topics and your project throughout the semester, it will be critical to be clear on your policy jurisdiction for your problem topics and your project overall. Jurisdictions matter, and the best way to illustrate variation in a problem is to compare your jurisdiction to neighboring jurisdictions or like jurisdictions using maps. And the, under the course Blackboard site, a section called Resources and then Data Sources, there are several mapping tools. There's the Chicago Health Atlas if you're focusing on Chicago as your jurisdiction, Community Commons, which provides a wealth of data across the country at m many jurisdictional levels, Simply Analytics, which is available for three through the US IC library using your NetID your Net and password, and the USDA Food Environment Atlas for those of you focused on food and nutrition issues. For this learning unit's Padlet assignment, you will post to the Padlet a data visualization map comparing your jurisdiction and neighboring jurisdictions to illustrate the extent of your problem. For the presentation due at the end of the learning unit, your assignment is to post a presentation with audio to the discussion board with your final problem statement and data visualization, including graphics, charts, and maps, to make the case that your problem is worthy of governmental attention. You will vote on each other's presentations to vote on the extent to which you're convinced that this is a worthy of governmental attention. Regarding the audio for your presentation, please go under resources and click on um, creating an uh, oral briefing. Um, and there'll be guidance in there on how to record audio overlays for PowerPoint presentations. A key role of the policy analyst is com to compile the evidence on the problem and the impact of potential policy solutions and present such evidence in a way that enables decision makers to act upon the evidence provided to them. As you read in Kettle, data do not speak for themselves and to know what to do, policymakers need help. That's where you as the analyst come in. You're helping to translate what is known from evidence to enable policymakers to act. And remember, in public policymaking, a decision to do nothing is an active decision being made, just like a decision to enact new legislation or promulgate new re regulations. Basic descriptive statistics such as frequencies and means are great for explaining complex piles of data and providing solid background information to make the case that a problem actually exists particularly differentiating the overall population from subpopulations that may be particularly affected by the problem. Inferential statistics, such as t-tests and regressions, however, are important for answering the why and what questions. Why questions get at why did this problem occur? What may have caused it? While well, what questions get at what can they do to resolve or ameliorate the problem? The latter gets at your alternatives. Yet, Regressions, t-tests, and other statistical tests are not easy for decision makers to understand or translate. That is going to be your job as an analyst, to make the evidence speak, to present it in clear and easy terms so that they're not mired down or bogged down by a p-value from a regression equation. The class readings for this learning unit provide important straightforward guidance on when to use tables, line charts, and bar charts. As you learn from class, he strongly advises against using pie charts. The Blackboard site contains a handout from Extreme Presentation on choosing the right chart. After reading class, I strongly encourage you to review and download the chart chooser and the slide chooser for your presentations to use as a reference. Be mindful of the key points made in class for each type of chart in the tables. 
I've posted a slide deck without audio summarizing the key points to bear in mind from the class chapters. At the same time, Kevl makes point key points relative to its maps and graphs. Each type of presentation format has a different purpose and you need to be mindful of exactly how you present your data and how it can be interpretive. You are essentially controlling the narrative with your charts, maps, and graphs. One thing to note on maps is that they're good for presenting a snapshot of descriptive data at one point in time, or you can use a series of maps sequentially over time to tell a descriptive story over time. Maps can suggest patterns, but they are not there for presenting causal linkages. That's where charts and tables come into play, but as noted earlier, maps stick in the mind of policymakers, so they're a very powerful tool. How many times have you heard a State of the Union speech or other political speech where a policymaker uses a story or an anecdote to bring their point to life? Stories and anecdotes are tools that policymakers use and that can help them relate to the problem and make it real beyond just data or numbers. However, Kegel provides an example where a testimony from women who had bone marrow transplants to treat their breast cancer even though evidence didn't support it. The women's stories helped Massachusetts pass a law requiring insurers to cover such procedures. Yet 15 years of evidence since the law was enacted demonstrate that such procedures are costly, painful, and no more effective in treating breast cancer than other procedures. In other words, stories can help make a compelling case that people can relate to, but they are not always based on enough causal evidence to have a population-wide impact, which is the goal of policymaking. Kegel discusses five key points when using stories. In order to be considered valid, stories and anecdotes need to be valid, in other words, the story must accurately capture the point trying to be made. Accountable, the source of the story must be clear. Context-based, the setting must be clear and the conclusion for the story must match the setting. Digestible, it should be a simple and not complicated story to understand. And real, the story has to be believable. That it's, it's why showcasing real people when telling a story in a political context really helps. It brings that story to life. Think about this. How do stories relate to your projects? It may be useful to use stories in your presentation and final briefing to help explain why this problem matters or to set the context. What are some key tips for policy analysts? First, be humble. Oftentimes, policymakers will disregard evidence that you provide, and they'll go with what they think is quote-unquote right. Policymaking is often fraught with uncertainty. We often do not have all the answers and need to go with the best available evidence at a given point in time. That is the satisficing concept that I spoke about in prior weeks. You also need to recognize biases inherent in data which can exacerbate inequities. Things to consider are how are the data that you're using compiled? Who compiled the data? Do they have any implicit or explicit bias? Were they an advocacy organization? Were they industry? Were they of a political, uh, political leaning? Think about those things because they can overshadow the nature of the data that you might be using. Who are the responders to the data that were collected? What populations are represented? Is it representative of the whole population or just a segment? These are many of the questions that you need to think about when using data to make a case that a problem is worthy of governmental attention and are using it to provide evidence for your analysis. Kegel goes into detail on this and you need to be sure to think about these key questions and don't take data just at its face value. Also, you do not want to be one side in analyzing or presenting the data. Recognize all sides of the issue and where opposing data or points can be made. Your goal here is to be an objective tactician even if you're working for a policymaker or organization with very specific positions. Your role as an analyst, if you're doing your job correctly, is to be objective and not to introduce your bias into the analysis. You want to present the full spectrum of data and evidence and let the data and evidence lead you in the proper direction. You do not want to come up with an a priori policy recommendation up front without going through the detailed process of identifying the alternatives and providing evidence to back up the alternatives that will inform your recommendation. Going back to the point on the prior slide about being humble, you need to remember that decision makers don't really need what you're going to produce. To convince them otherwise, you need to be convincing and present data in a simple and coherent manner that is persuasive and answers the questions that decision makers need answered. 
You need to recognize that what ultimately happens is a political decision, but analysts can and should do whatever they can to inform that decision with the best available evidence. That is your job. To speak above the noise.